In southwest Ohio, near Dayton, lies Hollywood Gaming Dayton Raceway. This slots parlor with a horse racetrack offers Class 3 Vegas-style slot machines. The original operators of Ohio's four standalone casinos backed a proposed constitutional amendment. In November 2009, 52% of voters approved the constitutional amendment, allowing one casino in the cities of Cincinnati, Cleveland, Columbus, and Toledo. Subsequent changes in state lottery legislation allowed paramutual racetracks to begin to offer video lottery terminal, VLT, style slot machines in 2012. These were the first Rosinos in Ohio and included Hollywood Gaming Dayton Raceway. In 2009, a constitutional amendment created the Ohio Casino Control Commission. Its website is comprehensive but only applies to slot machine casino gambling at Ohio's four standalone casinos. The Ohio Lottery eventually became responsible for and controls video slot machines found at Ohio's seven casinos. Ohio's Gaming Control Act states that the minimum theoretical payout is 85% for slot machines at Ohio's casino resorts. This same payout limit applies to slot machines at Ohio's racetracks with slot machines, thanks to the Ohio Lottery's video lottery game rules. Both sources offer return statistics by month, casino, and statewide. In December 2021, monthly casino revenue reports from the Ohio Gaming Commission shows return statistics for the four casino resorts were statewide 91.9%. Hard Rock Casino, 91.9%. Hollywood Columbus, 92.2%. Hollywood Toledo, 91.5%. Jack Cleveland, 92.3%. In December 2021, VLT Fiscal Revenue Reports from the Ohio Lottery shows return statistics for the seven racinos were statewide, 90.9%. Belterra Park, 90%. El Dorado Gaming, Scoyota Downs, 90.9%. Hollywood Gaming, Dayton Racino, 91%. Hollywood Gaming Mohawking Valley Racecourse, 90.7%. Jack Thistledown Racino, 90.9%. MGM Northfield Park, 91%. Miami Valley Gaming, 90.9%. The highest return for Racinos went to MGM Northfield Park at 91%, while the lowest went to Belterra Park at 90%. Overall, Jack Cleveland had the best return of any casino or Racino in Ohio, while Belterra Park had the lowest. And as is often true in Ohio, all four casino resorts had a better return than all seven ra racetracks with slot machines. Hollywood Gaming Dayton Raceway ranks second out of the seven Racinos, just 0.01% less than MGM Northfield Park and ranks seventh in the state. Otherwise, Hollywood Gaming Dayton is open 24 hours a day and seven days a week. The state of Ohio does not permit smoking in a commercial facility of this size. This racino does not have an attached hotel, nor does it have a parking structure, although it has plenty of lot space, and including valet service. Hollywood Gaming Dayton has three grills and a lounge serving drinks. Menus are limited. No masks are currently required by the state if guests are vaccinated, but employees and vendors must wear masks. Hollywood Gaming Dayton has its My Choice Players Club managed by Penn National Gaming. It has five tier levels, and at this time, spending $5 will earn you one point. Tier level point requirements are 1. Choice for new guests. 2. Advantage for those who have earned 1,000 points. 3. Preferred after earning 18,000 points, Elite after earning 50,000 points, and 5. The Owner's Club after earning 200,000 points. In the past, I'd reached Elite status twice, but am currently at the lowest tier level. I've just spent two hours at Hollywood Gaming Dayton, with perhaps 90 minutes playing or moving from machine to machine. I walked in with a $300 bankroll in my wallet and left with two-thirds of it. $196.84. I already had an account with this player's club, but hadn't used it since my Hollywood Lawrenceburg Casino trip report. On that trip, I earned 192 points. During this visit, I also earned 192 points. If I were to maintain a rate of nearly 200 points per visit, I'd reach advantage the next level up in three more visits. At a rate of $5 per club point, I spent $960 today at Hollywood Gaming Dayton. However, I paid $103 as my bankroll dropped from $300 to just 
under $200, meaning I cycled my bankroll slightly more than three times. Upon arrival around 2 p.m. on Sunday, I waited in line at the slow-moving promotions counter, but while waiting 20 minutes, had a nice conversation with Judy. No, I didn't tell her who I was. Why not? Because I was doing reconnaissance rather than promoting myself. We discussed what Sunday afternoons were like at Hollywood Gaming Dayton in her experience. Busy she said. Not being regular at this local casino, that was good information. After getting a new My Choice card, I did what I usually do at New To Me casinos. I walked it to see how it was laid out. Where were the biggest aisles? When crossing another aisle, which was the biggest intersection? How were the machines laid out at these intersections? What about the rows and carousels of machines at the entrances? Near the sports betting area? What about over by the cafe and grills? What did the outside of the high limit room look like? What did the inside look like? Hollywood Gaming Dayton isn't the biggest casino I've ever seen, not by a long shot, but it would have taken about 15 minutes to walk around. I took a lot longer than that. In my online course, 30 Days to Play Slot Smarter and Win, I teach this. Look up from your slot machine and take a few minutes to explore your casino. You might be surprised at what you observe once you start looking around. But an advanced technique, something that has become habit for me, is to do several things at once. Yes, I walked the casino, but it wasn't long before I recognized this type of casino layout. I still had to make sure I saw everything so there would be no surprises, but at the same time I started testing for my strategy one, the five spin method. As I walked over to the cafe area down various aisles while passing through large and small intersections, I made up to five bets on highly visible slot machines. In this way, I was using my five spin method combined with my strategy nine, location, 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 to improve my returns. If you know my winning slot strategy, it doesn't take long before you start combining them. Doing so feels natural. While using my five spin method to test if this casino gave out tastes, spoiler alert, it doesn't, I would pause my testing when it seemed like I'd found a candidate slot machine. And that's how I spent 90 minutes reviewing this casino. Yes, I got tastes from 10 out of 20 slot machines, which is basically a failed test. And most of the 10 tastes I did win were worth a nickel or dime. Yet testing for my strategy wasn't a waste of time because I was also evaluating machines using my 10, 20, 50, 100 bet evaluation approach. If I got a taste in the first five bets, and if that win wasn't a nickel or dime from a minimum 60 cent bet, then I might have found a candidate winning slot machine. I took this combined strategy approach to find candidate slot machines to evaluate as winners. I did this because the casino was so busy and getting busier by the moment that I felt I'd never get another opportunity to play that machine before leaving in an hour or so. On a machine where I got a big taste within five bets, I'd continue to make bets up to 20 bets. Normally I'd stop at 10 bets and evaluate, but my prior win meant continue to 20 bets. And if I was happy with my winnings at 20 bets, I'd continue to 50 bets. And if it was still going well enough at 50 bets, I'd continue to 100 bets before the next evaluation point. And so the casino trip went. I did this on three machines where I was sad to leave the first machine. It turned out to be the best of the three candidate machines I tried. On it, I was slowly winning with 60 cent minimum bets. So I switched over to a maximum $3 bets on this penny machine. And that's when I promptly won $164 in a bonus round. This last win brought that $100 bankroll up to $196.84. Why did I stop playing? Because as I teach my course, I was preserving my gains. I put the voucher into my deposit-only pocket of my jeans, a money management technique you can learn, or just buy a lockable wallet where you insert money into it while leaving its key at home. When I was leaving an hour later, I cashed it out, and that's how I was able to leave without having spent my entire $300 bankroll. And I was glad that I did. Why? Because I spent the rest of my bankroll trying out other candidate slot machines. As usual with short New to me casino visits, I had no prior experience knowing if the casino was busy or not. If I had known, I'd have been able to fold in my plan yet another strategy, the casino environment. Otherwise, as I walked through the casino, I saw no hand pays. Zip, nada, zero. And while the high limit room had a few people in it, they seemed to be simply coming and going rather than sitting and playing. I also thought it very odd that their high limit room had no aisle leading up to it. That 
told me Hollywood Gaming Dayton clearly doesn't make their high-limit slots rooms any sort of priority. It shows. Oh, and while I was there, few people were wearing a mask besides myself. I saw a few employees, but they were wearing masks. And given my long wait at the promotions counter, it did seem like they were currently short-staffed at this casino. If you get the opportunity to visit Hollywood Gaming Dayton in the next few months, try to get on that first candidate slot machine I played. It was a Dragon's Law jackpots machine facing the big intersection just inside the west entrance. You'll know what I mean if you walk through that area. 